While they're pretty broadly recognised today as anger-prone lapdogs and handbag accessories, Chihuahuas have a long history with the human race. Despite not being recognised by the American Kennel Club until 1904, the Chihuahua is not a young breed and had already been flourishing in Mexico for hundreds of years. While we may now associate them with Beverly Hills and Paris Hilton, there was once a time when the Chihuahua was considered an integral part of Aztec culture. Now, regardless of your opinions on the dogs themselves, this history is something that I think we should explore further. Let's get into it. All right, so this is going to be a little bit different to my previous videos because nearly all dogs fall under the same species, Canis familiaris, or domestic dog. The few exceptions to this include the dingo and the New Guinea singing dog, whose taxonomic statuses are debated due to their close lineage with modern dogs. Wolves are absolutely their own species, while these guys are in a bit of a grey area that has resulted in debate in the scientific community. But for all other dogs, we can trace their original ranking back to Carl Linnaeus, who will be showing up a lot in this series going forward. The guy essentially invented taxonomy, the system of classifying animals under Latin names, so he had a bit of a head start in that field. Like in my video on the ring-tailed lemma, the domestic dog was included in Linnaeus's 10th edition of Systema Naturae, the first book on zoological nomenclature. The domestic dog falls under the genus Canis, Latin for dog, while its second name, Familiaris, translates to familiar, with a connotation of ownership or servitude. This name distinguishes the species from the other members of Canis, including jackals, coyotes, the New Guinea singing dogs and dingoes I mentioned before, and most notably, wolves. As is pretty much common knowledge at this point, wolves are widely regarded as the forefathers of modern dogs, selectively bred by humans over centuries to produce the hundreds of breeds we see today. However, the lineage of some breeds is better documented than others, and the Chihuahua is one case we don't know a whole lot about their ancestry. DNA analysis tells us that dogs entered North America from Siberia, which is now a part of Russia, roughly 10,000 years ago. These dogs were then isolated from the rest of the world for the next 9,000 years. However, in the last millennium, there have been at least three independent reintroductions of dogs from other regions. The Thule people, considered ancestors of modern Inuit, brought Arctic dogs to North America roughly a thousand years ago, while Siberian Huskies were introduced to the same part of the continent during the Klondike Gold Rush in the Yukon during the late 19th century. However, the effect of these events pale in comparison to the impact of initial European contact during the 14 and 1500s. So many dogs were introduced to the region during this time that indigenous breeds were largely replaced. The Hare Indian, Salish Wool, Tulton Bear and Fuegian dogs have all become extinct in the centuries since. There's a number of theories as to how Chihuahuas came into existence. Some experts have theorised that the breed wasn't discovered in Mexico at all, but actually brought to the region from the island of Malta. Others have speculated that they may have even originated from mainland China. Early writing on the breed even suggested that Chihuahuas weren't fully canine, but related to chipmunks. And I don't find that to be a compelling argument. None of these theories are broadly accepted, however, as there's far more evidence that pre-colonial Mexican dog breeds are the direct ancestors of the Chihuahua. Looking exclusively at Mesoamerica, three known distinct breeds existed. The Itzquintli, Xolo Itzquintli, also known simply as the Xolo, and Teichichi. The most concrete theory suggests that the Teichichi and the Xolo may have been crossbred to produce some variety of the modern Chihuahua. The Teichichi was extinct by the time Spanish conquistadors reached Mexico in 1519, but it had an important role to play in pre-colonial regional culture that I'll get to later on. This leaves the Xolo as the oldest living Mexican dog breed, and one of the oldest breeds just generally in the world. It's now the national dog of Mexico, and a Xolo named Dante stars in the 2017 Pixar film Coco. But of the dogs that have survived to the modern day, like the Chihuahua and the Xolo, Genetic sequencing reveals that their genomes have drastically changed since European contact. Intermingling with foreign breeds has gradually altered the genetic makeup of these dogs over time, and a 2020 study showed that the Chihuahua has retained just 4% of its pre-colonial ancestry, implying the breed we have today may be greatly different to what it was prior to the 16th century. 
The breed's namesake comes from the Mexican state where they are still commonly found, Chihuahua. It's actually not the only name it's had, and the dog has been referred to as the Arizona dog, Texas dog, and just broadly the Mexico dog during the late 19th and early 20th century. Of those four names, I think Chihuahua is the most fitting, and it's the one that stood the test of time. At an average height ranging between 15 to 30 centimetres, or 6 to 12 inches, the Chihuahua is recognised by most kennel clubs as the smallest dog breed in the world. Their closest competitors include other toy dogs, such as Pomeranians, the Shih Tzu, Papillons, and Yorkshire Terriers. They are so tiny that a Chihuahua from Puerto Rico named Millie stood at less than 10 centimetres or 4 inches tall and was recognised by the Guinness World Records as the world's smallest full-grown dog in 2015. Breed standards for this dog generally don't specify a height, only a weight and a description of their overall proportions. In order to compete in British or American confirmation shows, a Chihuahua must not weigh more than 2.7 kilograms, or 5.9 pounds. Most dogs of this breed weigh a fair bit more than that, which is a bit odd when we consider that larger Chihuahuas tend to be healthier than the dogs that actually fit the breed standard. Not that that's exceptional by any means, often pedigree dogs aren't as healthy as crossbreeds and mongrels, but that can be its own video later on. There are actually two varieties of Chihuahua, and I've been showing you both throughout the video. You may have picked up on a different skull and head shape, which are colloquially referred to as deer head and apple head variants. Apple head Chihuahuas boast quite exaggerated features. Large eyes, a short snout, and an incredibly rounded head shape. Deer heads, by comparison, look a bit more... normal? Their features aren't nearly as cartoonish as what I mean, and the variant tends to stand a bit taller than the apple heads. Needless to say, I prefer the deer head by a fair margin, but confirmation shows disagree. Dogs of the deer head variety may still be registered, but they're not considered a separate type in competition, and this digression from the breed standard is considered a fault. Chihuahuas occur in virtually any colour combination, while their coats can be either short or long. One coat pattern that is actually disqualified from competitions is Merle, a genetic variant not uncommon in breeds like Australian Shepherds and Border Collies. Dogs with Merle coats are at a statistically higher risk of developing visual and auditory impairments compared to other dogs, and go blind, deaf or both at a much higher frequency. Merle coated Chihuahuas are therefore banned from breed confirmation events in an attempt to disincentivize breeding this variant. In part due to their small size, the Chihuahua is predisposed to a number of neurological diseases. One of the better documented of these conditions is hydrocephalus or water on the brain. This disease is characterized by an abnormally large volume of cerebrospinal fluid in the brain, causing chronic pain and loss of brain function. Treatment is difficult and it's not possible to determine which dogs are likely to have affected offspring. This predisposition is actually not a trait unique to Chihuahuas, and a number of other toy breeds are predisposed in much the same way, especially Maltese and Yorkshire Terriers. It's a case where the ideal breed standard for the Chihuahua can actually be a pretty unhealthy animal that is at great risk of a number of impairments. Preferencing the apple head over the deer head variants and emphasising that the breed needs to be as small as possible is, I think, a selfish action because we're putting our desires for the animal to be cute over the breed's actual health. When it comes to this breed's behaviour, the Chihuahua has a bit of a mixed reputation. Like many other small dogs, Chihuahuas are known for their above average aggression. A 2008 study found that of more than 30 breeds, the Chihuahua ranked among the top three in aggression towards strangers and owners, alongside Dachshunds, which I am pronouncing right, and Jack Russell Terriers. This is a fairly common trait among many toy dogs, as their smallness may make them more likely to react defensively, as they ultimately have more to be afraid of whether that be humans or other dogs that may dwarf them in size. There's also an argument that because of this small stature, owners are less likely to put in as much effort into training as they will with a larger breed. And while they're physically cuter and less threatening, they still need to be trained just like any other dog. Failure to do so is likely to result in many of the same negative traits seen in other breeds. Due to their small size, relative frailness, and sensitive personality, 
Chihuahuas aren't recommended in households with children under the age of eight. Even still, the breed is known for being quite bold and energetic, and often won't back down from aggressive encounters with much larger dogs. Dogs aren't the only thing they have to worry about, however, as the Chihuahua is small enough that coyotes and birds of prey, like hawks, may attack them if they are left alone. Okay, Paris, take it off. OMG, so cute. And don't worry, it's got that moat. Super high fences. No snake will ever get in here. Oh. <gasps> oh. Chihuahuas are also prone to shivering when cold, excited, scared, or for just about any other reason, really. Shorthaired variants in particular may need some kind of coat when going outside in colder weather. So long as they're taken care of though, Chihuahuas are exceptionally long-lived breeds, with a lifespan often ranging towards the high teens. The oldest Chihuahua ever recorded is a still living dog by the name of Toby Keith. At 21 years and 186 days old at the time of this video's release, he's the fourth oldest living dog and also older than me, which is a bit of a scary concept. Including deceased dogs, Toby Keith sits in 14th, so he's still got a ways to go to take the world record, currently held by an Australian cattle dog named Bluey, who died in 1939 at the shocking age of 29 years old. Finally, Chihuahuas are recognised for their fairly unique breeding habits. Their litter size usually ranges between two to five pups, but these pups aren't always true to size. What I mean by that is that pups from the same litter can mature to drastically different sizes from one another, with huge discrepancies between siblings. Larger female Chihuahuas are far less likely to experience obstructed labour when giving birth, which is where the newborn is unable to exit the mother. And still, smaller chihuahuas continue to be preferred by breeders because those marketed as teacup or even tiny teacup in size demand higher prices from buyers. I made you wait for the history, so here it is. The Toltec people of what is now Hidalgo, Mexico, are said to have kept a small dog known as the Techichi, which shared many traits with the modern chihuahua. The Aztecs, who later succeeded the Toltec, are thought to have bred the Techichi with the Sholo to produce some variant of the Chihuahua. The Aztecs are best remembered for their penchant for human sacrifice, but they religiously killed animals even more often. Chihuahuas had an important role to play in the lives of Aztec nobles, as after their death, a Chihuahua would be slain to bury or cremate it with the body of the human. They believe that the spirit of the dead Chihuahua would act as a guide through the afterlife for the soul of the dead noble. The human spirit needed help swimming across a river into the afterlife and would crawl onto the back of the Chihuahua's spirit to reach their destination. Personally, I would have picked a bigger animal for something so important, but Aztec nobility must have seen something in the breed, as there's evidence they kept large packs of hundreds of these dogs. Upon Spanish contact, Hernan Cortes, who led the initial expedition, wrote in a 1520 letter that the Aztecs raised and sold the dogs for food. This is likely untrue, or at least an exaggeration, as evidence suggests that the Aztecs consumed very few domesticated animals, with 90% of bones found at archaeological sites being deer. And I mean, it would be great to ask them, but within a year, the Aztecs no longer existed, as the spread of old world diseases like smallpox, flu, typhus, and many others quickly ravaged the indigenous populations of Mexico and later South America, who lacked immunity to these infections. But while their owners may have been gone, Chihuahuas stuck around but remained a rare breed until the early 20th century. They had been bred to be the companions of nobles in life and death, but with no nobles to own them, the Chihuahua was largely unknown. Travellers from the US began to purchase and import the breed starting in the late 1800s, eventually leading to the founding of the Chihuahua Club of America in 1923. In the early to mid 1900s, the breed continued to be relatively obscure, as most owners still had dogs for mainly practical purposes. Terriers, collies, spaniels, and beagles can hunt, herd livestock, retrieve fowl, and kill pests, which it's fair to say the Chihuahua is a little bit less adept at. Public perception of the breed began to shift by the 1960s, as companion dogs that aren't required for manual labor rose in popularity. In 1964, the breed was ranked 12th most popular on American Kennel Club registrations. Some 25,000 were registered with the club during the 1980s, 
But in 1997, fast food restaurant chain Taco Bell began to run an advertising campaign that starred a talking chihuahua named Gidget Chipperton. This commercial broadcast the breed into millions of American homes. And I think this is the point where we can say the Chihuahua became widely recognisable in popular culture. Psst. Yo quiero Taco Bell. During the late 90s and early to mid 2000s, the Chihuahua was at its height of popularity. It ranked seventh most popular in 1999 dropping to 8th in 2000 and 9th in 2001 and 2. Media personality Paris Hilton had a key part to play in establishing the breed as a fashion statement, commonly seen carrying the dogs in her hands or purse while in public. We even had films like Beverly Hills Chihuahua trying to capitalise off of the trend in 2008, maybe just a few years out of style but still raking in nearly $150 million in box office sales. I was tempted to check it out when I was researching this video but there's just nothing you can do to make me watch a talking dog movie. I'm sorry. The breed has continued to drop in rankings in the years since. 12th in 2007 and 8, 18th in 2012, and as of 2021, it sits in 37th place, in between Belgian Malinois and Collies. Rest in peace, Norwegian Lundhunds. Bad luck next year, I guess. It is important, though, to remember that these rankings aren't the be-all and end-all when it comes to a dog's popularity as more breeds have been added to these registries throughout the decades. Just from 2013 to present, a further 18 breeds have been added to the American registries. So for a breed to maintain its rank over the years becomes exceptionally harder, especially for a dog like the Chihuahua that is now closely associated with the fashion of the turn of the century. So, the Chihuahua has maybe had its time in the sun, but despite its behavioural and biological quirks, I think it's a breed that has gone a bit misrepresented in broader culture. While it's easy to dismiss the Chihuahua as a fashion accessory, they have a lot more history that I do suggest you check out if you're interested. I hope this video was in some way entertaining because it was honestly strangely difficult to write. I might hold off on dog breeds for a little while as getting this video in a state I was happy with was pretty challenging. That being said, next time I'll be covering the Greater Bilby, an Australian marsupial found in the central and western parts of the country. There are vulnerable species I have a lot to say on, so if you're interested in seeing a video on it or future stuff, you can subscribe and I'll see you again in three weeks.